Yeah, good morning. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Shankar Ayya, assistant professor in uh, Department of Physics, uh, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. Yeah, I am going to discuss about computer simulations of uh, multifunctional materials. So, before going into details of this uh, uh, research work of uh, computer simulations of multifunctional materials, I will um, uh, start with uh, history to computer simulations. What are uh, these computer simulations and uh, how can we use these uh, computer simulations to understand these multifunctional materials. So, here I am showing uh, uh, computer simulation work of uh, a magnetic material. So, if you take iron and um, uh, at high, high temperature you will find uh, there is uh, iron does not behave as a magnet. But uh, as you uh, cool it, uh, you will find that the high iron will become a magnet. So, there is a phase transition from paramagnetic to ferromagnetic state on cooling. So, here I am showing uh, three different pictures where the first one is T greater than Tc. Tc is the critical temperature for this uh, phase transition, second order phase transition. And we will know, uh, I will discuss in detail what are the phase transitions. So, here uh, the first picture is showing a, a temperature greater than critical temperature and the second picture is at uh, T is equal to Tc. So, the temperature which you have cooled the system that is equal to the critical temperature and uh, when T is very very less than critical temperature then what happens. So, you can clearly see from these three pictures at T greater than Tc. Uh, so, these uh, <coughs> domains. So, iron, um, uh, iron. so there are uh, uh, electrons that can have uh, spins. So, that spin can be aligned uh, in upward direction or downward direction. So, these two colors blue and red represent the uh, uh, value of spin. So, spin if spin is plus 1, it is positive and if spin is minus 1, it is blue color. So, you can see a T greater than critical temperature. When you cool this iron material below the above the critical temperature, uh, you do not see any magnetization. Right. So, the spins are oriented in random direction. That means, uh, the, some of the spins are oriented in up directions and some of the spins are oriented in down direction. So, when you calculate the total magnetization, that is a uh, sum of all the spins, you will find that the magnetization is 0. So, it, be, it behaves as a paramagnetic material. And when you cool the iron um, at a temperature equal to critical temperature, then you will find that slowly these uh, uh, spins are getting oriented in uh, upward direction and downward direction. These uh, blue regions and red regions are called domains. So, you can see now many uh, spins are uh, oriented in four positive directions are collected as a domain here and spins oriented in downward directions are also collected as a blue. So, slowly uh, there is a uh, uh, domination or uh, establishment of this magnetization when you cool the this iron material uh, at temperature equal to the critical temperature. Now, if you take the same iron and uh, cool the temperature which is less than the critical temperature, then you will see uh, uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a arrange arrangement or alignment of these spins either uh, in uh, upward direction or downward direction, you can see clearly uh, blue, red domains and blue domains. So, as I mentioned, red domains means that spins are oriented in upward direction and blue domains means that spins are oriented in downward direction. So, as the time proceeds, uh, you cool to a temperature and hold it for longer time, you will see uh, one of the, one of these spin will dominate. So, you will see either uh, total uh, system will be blue or the total system will be Right. That means, a iron which is a paramagnetic material without magnetization at room temperature, when you cool below the temperature T is less than Tc, we will find that this iron will become a magnet. 
So this is called a uh, phase transition and this kind of um, space transition is second order phase transition. So this experimental observation can be understood in simulations, computer simulations. So we will see what are these computer simulations and how we can use these computer simulations to understand different experiments. So this is one of the example and this um, this is uh, this work is a Monte Carlo simulations of a magnet. Okay, the second uh, uh, these are the uh, microstructures. Uh, so this is also a Monte Carlo simulation work of uh, martensites. Martensites are materials uh, that undergo solid to solid uh, uh, shape changes. So, um, so basically the in, um, examples of these uh, martensite materials are uh, steels, shape memory alloys, ITC superconductors, ferroelectrics. Uh, and proteins also undergo these uh, martensitic transformation. So the materials uh, that undergo martensitic transformations are called martensites. Ma steels have lots of applications um, in um, many industries and in our daily way, daily life. So it is important to understand steels which are uh, which are undergoing martensitic transformation. So we call these are martensites. Similarly, shape memory alloys uh, also have lots of applications. ITC superconductors, ferroelectrics, and proteins. All these uh, materials have lots of applications and uh, both in science and technology. So it's important to understand these materials. So lots of experiments were done. On these materials, so this is um, this is a martensitic material. This uh, picture is in um, experimental picture, and the left side one is obtained in Monte Carlo simulation study by Shankaraya and his collaborators. So you can see the experimental picture uh, microstructure is ob obtained in simulations. So similarly, here um, this is also an experimental uh, microstructures obtained uh, in um, lead way ortho venerate under transmission electron microscope. See in the beautiful microstructures on um, cooling into different temperatures. So this is also uh, um, experimental um, result uh, in nickel manganese gallium alloy, and the right side one is the Monte Carlo simulation uh, op microstructure obtained in Monte Carlo simulations. So what I am trying to say is that the experiments uh, which were carried, uh, real experiments carried on materials, uh, either it can be microstructure or it can be uh, statics or it can be dynamics. So we can uh, understand these experimental uh, results using computer simulation. So this is uh, an example to you know, show that how we can reproduce these experimental microstructures using a model and a computer simulations. So before going into details of uh, what are these multifunctional materials, uh, I will give a brief introduction to history of computer simulation. So what are these uh, computer simulations and how do they? How did they start? Okay. So computer simulations uh, were started around 1953 by Metropolis Rosenblatt, uh, Rosenblatt, Teller, and Teller. So these are the people who first started uh, these uh, simulation, computer simulation in 1953. So it is now over 70 years since the first computer simulation of a liquid, liquid was carried out at Las Alamas National Lab in United States. So the first group of people that were um, uh, applied are um, um, were, uh, applied a computer simulation uh, to understand the liquid was uh, Metropolis, Rosenblatt, Rosenblatt, Teller and Teller in 1953 in US at Las Alamas National Lab. So since then it has undergone so many um, developments, uh, these Monte Carlo computer simulations have uh, undergone so many uh, developments. So the first uh, Las Alamas uh, computer called Maniac and it was at that time one of the powerful machine available. <coughs> So that was in 1953. So now uh, it's around 73 years. So it is a measure of the recent rapid advance in computer technology that microcomputers of comparable power are now available to the general public at modest cost. So in uh, around uh, in um, 1953, the computer which was available to carry out a um, computer simulation of a liquid at Las, Las Alamas National Lab is uh, now um, is available in as a microcomputer as uh, there is a rapid advance in computer technology and uh, we are getting um, computers even at modest cost. So modern computers range from relatively uh, cheap, powerful, single user um, workstation to the extremely fast and uh, um, expensive mainframe systems. So, 
A rapid development of computer hardware uh, is currently underway with the introduction of specialized features such as pipeline and array process and totally new architecture. So the uh, in 1953 what we have a mania computer at last Alamas uh, has undergone so many developments and now computer hardware is also um, uh, uh, has a lot of um, rapid development and it is currently underway and uh, now there are uh, so many um, specialized uh, features in computers such as pi pipeline and array process which are all these new architectures so computer simulation is now possible on um, uh, different machines uh, including laptop desktop and most powerful supercomputer So the very, very earliest work carried by Metropolis and his collaborators in 1953 laid the foundation of modern Monte Carlo simulation. So the first work carried out by Metropolis, Rosenblatt, Rosenblatt and Teller and Teller uh, at Las Alamas Na National Lab to understand a liquid was the first Monte Carlo simulations. Um, so I will discuss in detail what is this Monte Carlo simulation. So the precise technique employed in this study um, to understand liquid is widely used and is referred to as simply a metropolis Monte Carlo simulation. So the original model, uh, the model uh, which was used to understand this um, uh, liquid uh, were a, um, highly um, idealized representation of molecules and uh, art spheres and this. So the <clears throat> so that was in 1953. But now within a few years. Monte Carlo simulations were carried out to on the Leonard Jones interaction potential by wooden worker to understand different liquids. So now there is a rapid uh, advancement or uh, um, amplification of these uh, computer simulations to understand uh, different uh, properties of liquids and uh, application of uh, Monte Carlo simulations to understand liquids on uh, Leonard Jones system was carried out in 1957 by Wood and Parker. So this made it possible to compare data obtained from um, experiments on, for example, liquid argon and uh, computer generated thermodynamic uh, potential derived from a model. So using computer simulations, we can uh, apply uh, one computer simulation and use a model to uh, study uh, liquid, for example, and you do an experiment on the liquid and study some properties. So then you can compare the experimental results and uh, with computer simulations to understand why we do why do we get some uh, specific results in an experiment so this monte carlo simulation which was used uh, by metropolis and his uh, collaborator El, at las alamas uh, uh, was um, to understand the static properties or equilibrium properties of a system it can be a liquid or it can be a solid so that uh, monte carlo technique can be used to understand the statics of a model system but a different technique is required to obtain the dynamic properties of many particle systems and such different technique is uh, known as molecular dynamics so molecular dynamics is a term used to describe the solution of the classical equations of motion that are newton's equations of motion for a set of molecule so basically there are two different types of uh, uh, computer simulation techniques which uh, we have discussed now the first one is monte carlo simulation technique uh, that is that can be used to study the statics or equilibrium properties of a model system and the different technique is uh, known as molecular molecular dynamics simulations and this uh, simulation computer simulation tech can be used to study the dynamic properties of a system and what do we use uh, in these molecular dynamic simulations? We basically solve the Newton's equations of motion for a set of molecules to understand or to study the dynamic properties of a system. So it was first accomplished uh, for a system of R spheres by Alder in 1957 and uh, Wainwright in 1959. So the molecular dynamic simulation was first carried out by Alder and then uh, Wainwright in around 1957 and 59 on a system of all spheres. We do the way they solve these uh, Newton's equations of motions to understand dynamic properties of this system. 
So in this uh, uh, work of molecular dynamic simulations by uh, Alder and Rainwright, uh, the particles move at constant velocity between perfectly elastic collisions and it is possible to solve dynamic problem without making any approximations within the limits imposed by machine accuracy. So how do we understand the dynamics of a system using molecular dynamic, uh, dynamic simulations is that we apply or we solve these Newton's equations of motions and where the particles move at velo constant velocity and between perfectly elastic collisions. So solving uh, these uh, uh, Newton's equations of motion, we can uh, obtain the properties of a system and without any, without making any approximations. So that is uh, the limits are uh, imposed by uh, whatever machine we are we have in hand to carry out these computer simulations. So it was several uh, several years before a successful attempt was made to solve the equations of motion for a set of Leonard Jones particles by Rahman in 1964. So around 1957 and 59, the first molecular dynamic simulation was carried out uh, on uh, Leonard Jones system um, to study uh, dynamic properties of a model system. And then uh, around 1964, uh, Hammond carried out or uh, solved these equations of motion um, for a set of Leonard Jones particles. So in this uh, work of work uh, by Rahman, an approximate step-by-step -step procedure is needed and since the forces change continuously as the particles move. So here uh, in molecular dynamic simulations, we are uh, interested in studying the dynamics of uh, uh, dynamics of a system. So where these particles are moving uh, from time to time. So we need a step-by-step uh, -step procedure uh, to understand these forces as the particles are moving with time. So since that time, the properties of Leonard Jones uh, system um, have been thoroughly investigated for different by different uh, scientists. Warlet in 1967, 68, Nicholas Gubbins and uh, Tildesley in 1979. So after the successful uh, application of these molecular dynamic simulations by Rahman, um, there were uh, different scientists uh, uh, who, who used these molecular dynamic simulations uh, successfully on Leonard Jones uh, particles to investigate different properties of the model system. So after this initial groundwork on atomic systems, computer simulation developed rapidly. So there was a Monte Carlo simulation technique that was uh, successfully applied and there is also molecular dynamic simulation so that was also successfully applied. Uh, molecular uh, di Monte Carlo simulations to study the statics or equilibrium properties of a model system and uh, molecular dynamic simulation is applied to study the dynamics of a model system. So after this uh, successful uh, application of this computer simulation, um, then uh, there was a rapid development in this area. So an early attempt to model a diatomic, diatomic molecular liquid by Hopp and Bernay was around 1968 and Bernay and Hopp by 1917 using molecular dynamic simulation was quickly followed um, by two ambitious uh, mo attempts to model liquid water first by Monte Carlo simulations uh, in 1969 and then by uh, Rahman and Stillinger in uh, 1971. So uh, that was uh, in, in 1959 and then uh, the first attempt to study a diatomic molecular liquid by uh, different scientists in 1968 and say 1970 and using molecular dynamic simulations and was uh, rapidly uh, follow, quickly followed by another uh, attempt uh, by Monte Carlo simulation to understand the statistics uh, statics of um, this model system by different scientists around 1969 and 1971. So the water uh, remains one of the most interesting and difficult liquids to study um, by um, study. So this work was done by Stillinger in 1975, 80 and good by 1979, Moss and Rice in 1982. So as um, as the time goes on, these uh, Monte computer simulations so that include Monte Carlo simulations and molecular dynamic simulations were applied to 
different systems and one of the system uh, which was very interesting is uh, uh, water and so this water was studied by Stillinger and Wood, Moose and Rice around 1970s to 1980s. So the then the small rigid molecules, uh, small rigid molecules were also explored by these computer simulations by Batojas, Levesque and uh, Quentrick in 1973. Flexible hydrocarbons by uh, Rayakyat and Bellemans in 1975 and even large molecules such as proteins also were studied uh, by different scientists uh, in 1977 and these are all the objects of studied in, uh, in those years which were uh, recent compared to 1953. So, computer simulation has been used to improve our understanding of phase transitions and behavior of it interfaces by Lee Barker Pound in 1974, Chapilla, Savila, Thompson, Rawlinson in 1977, Frankel and McTogg in 1980. So, computer simulations were used not only to study um, statics. Um, and dynamics and also we uh, we can apply computer simulation techniques to understand phase transition uh, which i discussed in the beginning of this presentation where i uh, um, showed the uh, phase transition uh, from paramagnetic state to ferromagnetic state uh, that is a second order phase transition and uh, another um, uh, example i gave was a martensitic phase transition which uh, which was a first order phase transition. So, we can uh, use computer simulation techniques to understand uh, under the phase transitions um, uh, including first order and second order um, that was done by, um, uh, by different scientists uh, which I mentioned. So, the techniques of computer simulations are also advanced with the introduction of non-equilibrium methods of measuring transport coefficients. So, not only these um, statics and dynamics and as well as uh, phase transitions and uh, computer simulations techniques are also used uh, um, in, uh, and uh, advanced with the introduction of non-equilibrium methods uh, to understand the transport coefficients of a system. So, the transport coefficients are measured by Lees and Adverse in 1972. Uh, Hoover and uh, Ash, um, Ashrath in 1975, uh, Sikoti and Jokos, uh, Jokos and McDonald in 1979. So, yeah, so the transport coefficients are also measured uh, by different scientists in around 1970s and then the development of stochastic dynamic methods by Turk, Lanthony and Friedman in 1977 and um, the incorporation of quantum mechanical effects are also done by different scientists in 1982 and 1986. So, as we can see, um, uh, computer simulations were applied to understand different properties of different systems as uh, the time proceeds. So now uh, we are uh, we have uh, have given a brief history of these um, computer simulations. So that uh, it's a time to ask. What is a computer simulation and how does this computer simulation work? And what can this computer simulation tell us? So, I have uh, given you um, the uh, history or uh, introduction to computer simulations where I discussed um, what can we um, do uh, by giving an example of magnet and martensitic material, uh, what can we do using computer simulations? And then I'll uh, I also gave a history of uh, computer simulations. So how did uh, when did it start and how did, what were the developments in computer simulations to understand different systems? So now the question is, what is a computer simulation and how does it work, and what can it so, these are the three uh, different questions to uh, understand so that uh, we can uh, understand what is this computer simulation and how can we apply this simulation to our uh, specific system to study different properties. So, we um, there are some problems in uh, statistical mechanics um, that are exactly solvable. 
so statistical mechanics uh, is a brain, uh, branch of physics where we uh, where uh, we uh, apply these computer simulations so statistical mechanics is basically uh, tells us uh, average behavior of a um, uh, system or average behavior of any physical quantity of a system so we can use uh, these uh, uh, computer simulations for different models available in statistical mechanics to obtain the average uh, behavior of any physical quantity to understand a particular system. So in statistical mechanics, there are exactly solvable models. So we can uh, apply these models for a system and we can solve these models and we can uh, understand a physical property. So we mean that a complete specification of the microscopic properties of the system, such as the Hamiltonian of a um, idealized model like perfect gas or Einstein crystal leads directly and perhaps easily to a set of interesting results or macroscopic properties such as an equation of state which we already know with PV is equal to NKT where K, B, K is the Boltzmann constant, T is temperature, P is pressure and V is volume. So we can, um, they, uh, we can uh, now understand that there are uh, models in statistical mechanics that uh, can be applied to a system. And those uh, models can be solved exactly, um, for example, here ideal gas and Einstein crystal, uh, we can solve those models exactly and we can uh, get some interesting results. Uh, one of them is uh, equation of state. So there are only a handful of non-trivial, exactly solvable problems in statistical mechanics. Right? Uh, this is uh, explained by Baxter in 1982. So the two-dimensional Ising model is uh, one of the famous examples. So we can solve um, the two-dimensional Ising model has been solved exactly uh, so um, to understand the phase transition from a paramagnetic state to ferromagnetic state which I discussed in the beginning of this uh, presentation. So the model which was applied to study the phase transition uh, in a magnet is known as Ising model. So this Ising model uh, in two dimensions um, is solved exactly and uh, to understand different properties as well as a phase transition uh, from paramagnetic state to a ferromagnetic state. So that one is exactly solvable model uh, in statistical mechanics uh, to understand phase transition in a magnet. Some problems in statistical mechanics, while not being exactly solvable, succumb readily to analysis based on a straightforward approximation scheme. So, some problems uh, we cannot uh, solve exactly, and we need some approximations um, so that we can uh, solve some properties of a average properties of a physical quantity. So, computers may have an incidental calculational part to play in such work, for example, in the evolution of cluster integrals. In the real expansion of dilute or imperfect gases, the problem is that like real expansion, many approximation schemes do not work um, when applied to liquids. So as I mentioned, we can solve some models exactly uh, uh, and understand some properties of a uh, particular system. Uh, but in statistical mechanics, there are some models which we cannot apply, which, which we cannot solve. The models cannot be applied or can be applied to a system, but that cannot be solved exactly to understand different properties of a system. So then we need some approximation. So computers uh, may have an incidental calculation part in such cases where we cannot solve these uh, models exactly, then we can use these computer simulation models to understand the properties of a system. For example, here I have seen expansion of cluster integrals and um, uh, virial expansion and um, different uh, such different uh, examples where we can use computer simulations because we cannot solve these models exactly. For some liquid properties, it may not even be clear how to begin constructing an approximate theory in a reasonable way. So, uh, if you want, uh, there are some um, liquids, uh, the properties of some uh, liquids uh, may not be uh, uh, we may not even know how to construct an approximate theory, not even uh, the, uh, not even an exact or uh, solvable model. We do not know how to 
uh, construct an approximate theory in a reasonable way so that we can understand or obtain the properties of some liquids. So the more difficult and interesting the problem. So the problem as the problem gets more and more difficult and uh, and the interest and it is and uh, it is more and more interesting. In such cases, the more desirable it becomes to have exact uh, results available both to test ex existing approximation methods and to point out um, ways towards new approaches. So uh, there are um, it's uh, as we uh, there are some si systems which are very interesting. Uh, to study and understand the properties of such systems, but um, it's very difficult to propose a theory and to obtain a model and to solve exactly uh, you know, different properties of such system and to compare those uh, results with the experiments and um, and to uh, suggest new approaches. So it is also important to be able to do this without necessarily introducing the additional question of how closely a particular model mimics a real liquid. Although this may not, uh, this may also be a matter of interest. So we uh, there are different models, and we uh, we need to know whether uh, whether uh, such when a specific model or a particular model can be applied uh, to a particular system. Or can we mimic uh, this uh, real system by or uh, through our model? So it's very important to understand this. So computer simulations have a valuable role to play in providing essentially exact results for problems in statistical mechanics, uh, uh, which would otherwise only be solvable by approximate method or quite interactive. So uh, this is the point where uh, this is the um, place where uh, we cannot solve the models exactly to understand or to obtain the properties um, uh, to compare with experiments. Are we? Uh, so there are some systems where we do not know whether uh, this model can mimic the system or uh, how far it uh, mimics the real system. So in such places, we can use computer simulations and uh, these computer simulations can play a very important role to um, obtain um, results um, in um, through some approximate, um, approximate methods um, which were not uh, you know, soluble exactly. So in this sense, computer simulation is a test of theories and historically simulations have indeed discriminated between well-founded approaches and ideas that are plausible but in the event less successful. So computer simulations um, is a test of theories and uh, but uh, yeah so sometimes these simulations uh, results can maybe uh, in agreement with experiments or may not be agreement with the experiments and simulations so um, uh, so they have been discriminated between well-founded approaches and um, yeah. So that is the reason why the, uh, this uh, 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 very uh, very less successful in the beginning. So the results of simulations may also be compared with those of real experiment. In the first place, this is a test of underlying model used in a computer simulations. So computer simulations are used to uh, obtain results of a particular system by applying a model. So the results which were obtained were uh, you can compare we can compare these results with the real experiments. And uh, in the first place, the results uh, obtained in a simulation is a first test of what model we are using to mimic for a particular system. So first, these results can help us to understand whether the model is really. Um, uh, uh, mimicking our system so that we can compare our computer simulation results with experiment. Eventually, if the model is a good one, the simulator hopes to offer insights to the experiment list and assist in the interpretation of new results. So if the model, whatever model we are uh, using uh, to carry out a computer simulation, if the model is a good one or it can really mimic uh, our uh, real system or any model uh, system, then the simulation results can give us or help us help an experiment list to understand the experimental results obtained through 
uh, experiments on a real system. So this dual role of simulation as a bridge between the models and theoretical predictions on the one hand and between models and experimental results on the other hand is shown uh, in our figure. So as I mentioned, so computer simulations now can be used um, to understand the model that is applied to un, uh, obtain results of a system and also we can answer, we can use these simulation results to compare with experimental results. <coughs> So that is uh, that is shown in this figure. So you can see there are uh, real liquids. So real liquids you can use models. So we are proposing a model to mimic these real liquids. So then those models, uh, whatever we uh, uh, propose the models to mimic a real liquid, that is a model liquid or a model system. Here I am taking a liquid, but in general any real system. So we um, propose models to understand these real systems. So then those are model systems. So these real systems, uh, we can perform experiments on these real systems and then we will, uh, we can, we will obtain experimental results. Right. So on the other way, we are pro we can propose the models for to mimic these real systems, and then we have model uh, systems. And these model system can be uh, we can carry out computer simulations of these model systems, and then we can construct approximate theories. So you you are proposed a model to that model uh, mimic a real system. So now you can use this model to construct approximate theories to obtain different properties of the system. And you can also carry out a computer simulations to obtain different properties of the system. So there are two ways uh, once you propose a model system. One is computer simulation, another one is constructing approximate theories. So by carrying out computer simulations of this model system, you will obtain exact results for the model. And by constructing approximate theory, you obtain theoretical predictions. So now you can compare these computer simulation results with the theoretical predictions and then you can also compare these simulation results with experimental results. So by this you can test the model as well as you can test the theory. So using computer simulation, this computer simulation is now a bridge, it acts as a bridge between theory and experiment. So you can use these computer simulation results to compare the experimental results so that to understand the experimental results and also you can use these uh, simulation results to compare with theoretical predictions whatever uh, results we are getting um, in um, theory by proposing or uh, by using approximate theories. So you can compare these with theoretical predictions and you can test both theory as well as model. So, so computer simulations act as a bridge between these theoretical predictions and between models and experimental results on the uh, other hand. So it is a bridge between theory and experiment. So computer simulation provides a direct route from the microscopic details of a system. Uh, for example, the masses of atoms, the interaction between them and molecular ge geometry to macroscopic properties of an experimental interest. Uh, for example, the equation of state, the transport coefficients or uh, structural order parameter and so on. So computer simulation provides a direct route from microscopic details to the macroscopic um, properties of a system. So we can use computer simulation of a model where we are using um, microscopic details of a system uh, in a model and carrying out computer simulations and then using this uh, uh, output of these computer simulations we can understand the macroscopic properties of, um, of a system that was studied in experiments. So you can compare the uh, computer simulation with experiments. As well as being of academic interest this type of information is technologically uh, very useful. It may be difficult or impossible to carry out experiments under extremes of temperatures and pressure while a computer simulation of the material uh, in say a shock wave, a high temperature plasma or a nuclear reactor um, or a planetary core would be perfectly feasible. 
so uh, if you want to study or if you want to carry out uh, an experiment on uh, systems uh, which are very difficult for example high temperature plasma or a shock wave or a nuclear reactor or planetary core it's very uh, it's impossible or um, very difficult because we want to uh, we are interested in such systems which are under extreme properties extreme temperature or extreme pressure so we can use computer simulations in such a cases where uh, we cannot do an experiment on such a system quite subtle details of molecular motion and structure for example in heterogeneous catalysis fast ion conduction enzyme reaction are difficult to probe experimentally but can be extracted readily from a computer simulation so uh, there are some there are systems uh, where uh, we cannot carry out experiment under extreme conditions or higher such as high temperature high pressure so those such uh, such experiments can be carried out in a monte uh, monte uh, computer simulations and we can study different properties of such systems finally while the speed of molecular events is itself an experimental difficulty it presents no hindrance to the simulator so in experiment it's very difficult to uh, carry out the work but in simulation we can use extreme high temperature or high pressure so it's no difficulty in simulation so a wide range of physical phenomena from the molecular scale to the galactic scale uh, may be studied using some some form of computer simulations uh, way, way which these systems are very difficult to carry out experiments but computer simulations can be used to study these uh, systems so the microscopic state of a system may be specified in terms of the position and movement of a constituent set of particles the atoms are molecules so we are going to state the microscopic state of a system in terms of position and momentum coordinates um, of atoms are molecules so using some approximation it is possible to express the hamiltonian of a system as a uh, function of the nuclear variables the motion of electrons have been uh, averaged out making the additional approximation that a classical description is adequate we may write down the hamiltonian h of a system of n molecules as a sum of kinetic energy and potential energy as a functions of position coordinate and momentum coordinate so q which is a position you can write down the position in a position in terms of position coordinate and you can write down the momentum coordinates of these uh, atoms or molecules and the n atoms are n molecules of a system and then you can write down the hamiltonian uh, that is a sum of kinetic energy um, and potential energy so the kinetic energy is a function of momentum or velocity and potential energy is a function of position coordinates so the kinetic energy in general takes the form of p square by 2m where m is the mass of uh, atom i and the potential energy you can you um, based on your system uh, you need to construct the potential so you can use lenard jones potential or you can use different potential um, it depends on what kind of system you are interested in and uh, to carry out a simulation Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.